A crucial element of building your business is refining your employee performance review process with fair and action-oriented feedback. If you do not have an annual review process, you're probably going to lose an employee to another company that does. Annual review processes are critical to giving feedback and maintaining employees' hope and dreams of growing and earning more money within your business. Here is how to build this process from scratch to become a world-class organization. First, the most important step of this process is gathering data and information. A company cannot effectively conduct an annual review process without leveraging data. There are three types of data that you must collect to run this process. 360 reviews, qualitative data, and quantitative data. Before diving into each one, it's critical that your business has core values though to ensure that these processes are done correctly. Now, Core values are not just words that we throw up on a wall and we just say this is our business. The best organizations leverage core values to source, hire, onboard, train, retain, give feedback, coach, develop, promote, and give raises to employees. Company values are going to be the cornerstone of your 360 reviews internally and qualitative data. We leverage values as the base of feedback across your organization to further deepen your employees' buy-in to your culture and how to grow and perform in your business. Some examples of core values from Amazon are ownership, delivers results, buys for action, earns trust. Once you have this set up, and if you already have this set up, we can dive into the 360 degree review. The 360 review means that talent is going to get feedback from all positions around them, people that may be beneath them, people that are lateral and equivalent to them, and people that are above them. When we do this, it provides the most comprehensive assessment of an individual. At Amazon, individuals have a minimum amount of employees that they need to receive feedback from. A fair number to aim for in your company will be five to 10 minimum. When you send out these internal reviews internally, questions should be formatted in the following way. One, what are the strengths of this employee? And when you do this question, make sure there's a drop down menu of the core values of your business. So when someone is assessing them, they can assess them leveraging the core values. Two, which values does this individual have an opportunity to improve upon? Three, please write out feedback on two to three of the values this employee displays strengths in. And then this section, you're gonna have a value that they could select to display strength in and then write further on it. Four. Please provide feedback on two to three values that this employee displays an opportunity in. Now, quick context. Your business should probably have at minimum five to 10 core values. Amazon has over 10. So you wanna make sure that you have a comprehensive leadership data assessment tool using these values. Secondly, is qualitative data. Once the 360 degree feedback is complete, it's the job of each manager to go through to review the data from the 360 review and create a plan to present the employee to the leadership team. In the 360 review, you wanna make sure that you have a section set aside for the manager of the employee. You want them to be able to write their observations, trends, insights, and commentary on each employee, taking all the information from the 360 review and their own experience to really give an overarching assessment. Here's a short example of what a manager can say here. Adam displays effective use of ownership and delivers results. Both clients and team members view him as a subject matter expert and can rely on him. For opportunity, Adam has the opportunity to earn trust more. He focuses too much on performance delivery and does not have a deep understanding of what his team, peers, and clients need on an emotional level. A handful of his peers actually resent him due to his arrogant nature. And in this example, arrogant will be quoted from feedback from the 360 review. Now, these things give comprehensive data and feedback for something we'll come to in a little bit. And finally, the last piece of data is performance data. This would fall under the bucket of quantitative data. This can be easily identified if the org chart and expectations were set up properly in your business. Some things you could use in this section are what percentage of goals were hit, what percentage of annual KPIs were executed upon. If you have these things preset, you're now just referencing data that is already there. If you don't, you need to go back and create these things and then for next year, try to be a little bit more prepared. At Amazon, it was the job of the individual to aggregate their information and present it to their manager. And then for their manager to review the aggregated KPIs and data and add in the missing information, if there was any, to create a holistic perspective on this employee. Once all the data is collected, we can move on to step two. The second step of your process is determining should employees receive a raise and a promotion, or should we think about letting go of this employee? This may be the most sensitive part 
of this whole process. So you do not want to take this lightly. And you're gonna to wanna to watch this to make sure you do not mess this up. The objective of this section, if your business is large enough, is to group employees into three categories. High performers, which are the top 10% of your employees, effective performers, which are the middle 80%, and low performers, which are the bottom 10%. To standardize promotions and raises, each qualifying group will get a correlating raise based on the bucket that they get grouped into. High performers can get a 10 to 15% raise on their annual compensation. Effective performers could get a 3 to 9% raise on their annual compensation. And low performers can get a 1 to 3% raise on their annual compensation, depending on inflation. What's important in this section is that your company is large enough to effectively stack rank employees against another to know who falls into which bucket. If you have less than 10 employees, this part may not be relevant in terms of grouping employees, but you could still assess employees into one of the three categories based on your criteria. Now, if your organization is large enough, you will want to conduct an annual review meeting with all management that should take one to six hours. In this meeting, you're going to review each employee, their 360 degree feedback, their qualitative feedback from their manager, and their performance data and quantitative feedback. Each manager is going to present each of their direct reports. They're gonna have a recommendation into which category they should be grouped in. Managers in the meeting that know this employee will vote in agreements or disagree with the assessment by the manager. And then there will be a decision grouping the employee into one of the three performance categories. At the end of the meeting, when everyone is grouped, there will be a final review to confirm if the groupings are correct. And if you have enough employees, you wanna make sure that it's truly reflective of a top 10%, a middle 80%, and a bottom 10%. The most important thing here is to be fair and consistent. If you're not fair and consistent, there could be serious legal repercussions. So this is something you want to take super seriously. From here, the next step of this conversation will be to evaluate compensation plans, raises, promotions to end the meeting. Now in this section, just make sure you have a standardized way to give raises and promotions and go through that conversation. The third step of your annual performance review process is conducting your one-on-ones to deliver the feedback of this full process. Now that rankings are finalized, it's each manager's responsibility to go and present the data and information to their direct reports. My recommendation here is to first and foremost have the employee present their thoughts on themselves and their assessment of themselves to each manager. And the reason this is important is it gives the manager a realistic expectation of how self-aware this employee is, because that should be part of the reflection as well. When the manager speaks to the employee, you want the feedback to be hyper-specific, referencing data, qualitative information, and the 360 review. Every meeting should end with a very specific performance development plan that will review how the employee over the next 12 months can grow, elevate, improve the business and improve themselves so they can keep elevating their performance and be hyper specific, make quarterly goals, individual KPIs and individual projects that you want them to self-manage while you will support them on their growth trajectory. In the event that an employee is a bottom 10 performer, the manager would probably have to enroll this employee in either a professional development plan or a performance improvement plan. If you don't know, performance improvement plans can be defined as PIPs, which typically mean that this employee will now have 30 days to elevate their performance or they're going to be let go. I will not be reviewing pips in this video and I will review it in a future video, but that's another reason why you should subscribe to the channel if you're liking this content. Finally, to end this process, you want to conduct a year end or a year beginning meeting. Typically, promotions in an organization are shared at an all hands meeting to start January. It's relevant that you share it in here because you don't want employees having to have the responsibility of sharing with their peers that they got promoted because that can be awkward and cause tension. You wanna ask your employees to hold off on telling anyone internally that they received a promotion and wait till this all hands meeting. And in this all hands meeting, you're gonna review a lot of things. The, how we finished the prior year, what our goals for this year are, insights, lessons, and you're gonna have a specific section for promotions. You shout out your employees, you congratulate them, everyone gives them a round of applause and you move on. And that finishes our annual review process. I know breaking it down in this video may seem simple, but I understand that this can be complex and overwhelming. If you're feeling like you need assistance setting up your annual review process for the upcoming year or for this year, feel free to reach out. In the below description, there's a calendar link to my company where we can help set up a consultation and set this up with you. And if you receive value from this video, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. My goal is to help you grow your business and make growth easy. 
And when you subscribe, I'll deliver consistent value add content to your feed every single week to help you grow your business. Thank you.